guys? guys? It's your boy Frankie Fix. And Jacob Fix. And we're here today to fix a Nintendo Switch that has what? It has a charging problem and it won't turn on. Oh, then what are we going to do then? We're going to fix it. That's right. <laughs> and if you haven't already, please... Like and subscribe with the bell on so you... <laughs> So you can oh, yeah. see more go videos like these. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, guys. And if you need help with your console, you can contact us today at Game, Game Rounds. Rounds. Game Rounds is a premier video game store located in Burbank, California, that can handle all your video game needs. Anything from current day to retro. We also do repairs on all consoles and controllers. Call today to schedule your. Your repair and stuff. <laughs> Come today and schedule your repair at Game Rounds. All right, let's get into it. Guys, let's go over a couple of the tools that you're going to need before we do this project. First, you're going to need a PH00. I'm using a Husky. You could use any brand that has good quality. Uh, you want to make sure that you use good quality tools because you don't want to strip out your screws. Next, we're going to need a TriPoint Y00 screwdriver. I have a pick that I use to pry open the hinge locking flaps, uh, but you could also use a spludger tool like this one or even something like a pick uh, can get underneath those flaps and, and lift them up for you. You're also going to need a pair of tweezers. I'm using a sharp pair of uh, needle nose tweezers. Uh, and here's just an extra spludger tool just in case I need it. Um, also, I'm using a pair of crescent needle nose pliers uh, these will help you pull out uh, like your speaker connectors and things like that all right we'll go ahead and get started step one press the button on the back of the switch to release the joy cons and then we're going to go ahead and remove the back side screws and you're going to do this by using a y00 screwdriver these screws are silver in color. Remember to keep your screws together. If you watch any of my previous videos, you know that I use this mat to organize my screws. You can organize them however is easier for you to remember. You can go back and rewatch this video to remind yourself where the screws go. These are 6.3 millimeter long screws. And they're black in color. The heads might be silver, but they're black in color. All right, now, step four, we're gonna go ahead and remove the top and bottom screws. Uh, using a PH00 screwdriver, we're gonna remove three uh, screws, secu uh, securing the rear panel. Now, um, these screws, there's one 2.5 millimeter lo uh, long screw on top edge of the switch. And that's this edge here. Wherever the game card goes in, there's gonna be one screw there. You'll need to remove that screw. Set it to the side. Now we're gonna flip our switch over and we're gonna remove two 2.5 millimeter screws with our PH00 from the bottom, that'll be right next to the C port. Sometimes they're a little bit stubborn to come out. Go ahead and remove them. All right, now that we got those out, we're gonna go ahead and use a PH00 screwdriver to remove two 3.8 millimeter screws on the Joy-Con rails, and they're in the center. If you count from the edges, you count in to one, two, or the third screw in, or the middle screw. You're gonna remove that screw. From both Joy-Con rails. All right. All right, step six, we're gonna go ahead and flip up the kickstand on the back of the switch. And if you have an SD card in here, you're gonna remove the SD card. 
I'll set that to the side. Uh, now step step seven is going to be using a PH double uh, triple zero screwdriver or double zero screwdriver. In this case, to remove a 3.1 millimeter screw securing the micro SD card reader to the device. I'm going to set that here. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove the rear panel. Uh, to do this, you can just get underneath there with your fingernail. Or you can use a spludger tool like one of these to pry it up. You're going to remove the back panel. You can see the back panel is dirty. I'm going to go ahead and use a vacuum cleaner real quick and vacuum up the dust. I also like to uh, use a paper towel and some 91% alcohol to just kind of rub out any of this gunk on the back. Get it cleaned up as good as possible. All right, now we can go ahead and put our rear panel to the side. Okay, same thing with this uh, heat with this heat shield. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down before I remove the screws. With the 91% alcohol, you're both removing grease and grime, and you're also sanitizing the console at the same time. Okay. You can see they, they get pretty dirty. All right, next we're gonna use the PH00 screwdriver to remove uh, the 3.1 millimeter screw securing the micro SD card reader to the motherboard. This screw is silver in color. We're gonna go ahead and set our micro SD card reader to the side. Next, we're gonna remove the shield plate and to do that we're gonna have to uh, remove the screws that are, are holding the shield plate together these are all 3.1 millimeter screws I have one over here by the fan one over here in the corner next to the rail. And you have one over here on this other back corner over here. So in total, oh, I'm sorry, I missed one right here. Should have six screws here. Now you can use a tool like this or your fingernail to get underneath here and pry up on the heat shield. Now the heat shield has, uh, this paste here basically mimics a thermal pad. So if this paste becomes cracked or messed up, you can take, you can remove this with some alcohol and put a thermal pad in its place. You'll need a pretty thick one. Um, but this, this paste is still in good condition. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse it, set it to the side. Next, I'm gonna disconnect the battery and to do that, I'm gonna use my pick. Just gonna slide the pick underneath the corner and lift up on the tab to release the battery. And now we're gonna go ahead and get come over here where our heat sink is. We're gonna remove three PH003 millimeter screws from the heat sink. Just like so. And now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and re uh, we're gonna remove the heat sink. Now this isn't the easiest thing to do. You can get your little pick underneath it, and pry up. Um, also, you're gonna 
on this front part here where the foam piece is, you can slide this underneath here. Use a different splutter tool here. Just gonna remove the foam on that edge, just like so. Now this has thermal paste on it. This thermal paste is still pretty wet. It's not bad, but we have to replace it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with some alcohol. Make sure if you get this stuff on you to clean it off you right away. I'll just go ahead and remove this. You can also use a Q-tip with some alcohol to get off any, any uh, stubborn paste. I'm going to use a vacuum. All done there now there's some also on the heat sink itself that you need to remove some paste let's go ahead and remove that Good to go. We'll set this to the side. Just gonna keep wiping this paste until it's all gone. If you don't do it, it'll get all over you during the entire repair. It's better to better to do it now. Okay. Right out the gate, I'm noticing something here on the board. And I'll go ahead and put that on the, uh, let's put it under the microscope. Okay. If you look here, it looks like we have some damage. R2 looks like it's become dislodged from the board. That may be the reason why the customer is not getting power. Uh, looking at the pins on the charging port itself, they all look like they're in place. And we'll go ahead and test. See if we have some shorts here. is that could be the reason why we're not getting any power and we're not charging. Check the fuse. Okay, we have open line on the fuse. So that component could be causing could be causing our short. So what we'll do, we'll go, we'll go ahead and continue disassembling this down to the motherboard, take the motherboard out and then uh, we'll replace that part and see if that fixes the switch. Um, so we'll go ahead and continue on. And uh, we've just removed our heat sink. If, if, you're, if you lost track of where we are, we're on step 13. So step 14, um, after we remove the heat sink, we clear up the thermal paste uh, right before uh, 
reinstallation will apply new thermal paste. All right, guys, continuing forward, step 15, we're gonna remove the headphone jack and card reader. Okay, and this is gonna be a little bit of a process. You wanna do this very carefully, so pay attention and do it slow. Um, once again, I've said it in many videos, if you have any doubts before you start to disassemble anything, take good pictures. Use an iPad, use a telephone, whatever you got to take a picture so that you can remember exactly where the ribbon cables go as well as the flow of the screws and where the screws are located. All right guys, so step 15 is to remove the headphone jack card reader. Um, to do this, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, first thing we're gonna do on step 16 is slide the digitizer cable out of the connector, okay? So we're gonna lift up on the tab, step 15, with using our spludger tool. And we'll use a pair of tweezers to remove the cable out of the connector, just like so. Now we're gonna use our spludger tool and pry the headphone jack up like this. Step 17. And step 18, we're gonna use a PH00 to remove the three 3.1 millimeter screws. One, two, and three. Okay, S step step uh, eighteen was or nineteen was to remove the headphone jack bracket. So we'll go ahead and set the headphone jack bracket with the three screws. And okay, now okay. we can go ahead and remove our headphone jack card reader. Okay, set that to the side. So next we're gonna, on step 20, we're gonna go ahead and flip up the hinge locking flap on the LCD ribbon cable zip connector. After we do that, I'm gonna use a pair of tweezers. Step 21, we're gonna go ahead and remove the LCD ribbon cable. Just like so, straight out. All right, step, step 22, we're gonna use our spludger tool to lift up on the hinge locking flap for the fan ribbon cable for the fan mo motor. And step 23, we're gonna use our tweezers to remove the cable, pulling it straight out. Step 24, we're gonna use our spludger tool to flip up the hinge locking flap on the power and volume button ribbon cable ZIF connector. It's this black one. Lift that up, just like so. We're gonna use our tweezers here as well to remove the ribbon cable. Pull it straight out. Guys, we're on step 26, and we're gonna use our spludger tool to lift up on the hinge locking flap on the small, uh, it's the very small LCD ribbon cable ZIF connector, and it's this one here. It's white with the black HLF. You're going to lift up on that. And again, step 27 is real simple. You're going to use your tweezers to slide underneath and remove this cable. All right. Step 28. We're going to flip up the small hinge locking flap or the HLF on the Joy-Con sensors rail. This is a rail, uh, it's a data cable. You're going to lift up on this and the same thing. Carefully, we're going to slide our tweezers in and we're going to remove this kind of a kind of a bad angle for me here bear with me there we go remove this cable just like so step 30 we're gonna pry up on the black antenna antenna cable which is right here this is the black antenna cable oops right here I'm just gonna stick my tweezers underneath here and pry it up just like so. And then we're gonna come to this other side where the white antenna cable is and we're gonna pry that up as well. Make sure you go straight up so that you do not damage the connector here at the bottom. Okay, and once you got those out of socket, we can move on to step 31 and 
Oh, that's what we just did. Step 31. Pry up the white antenna cable. My bad. I'm getting ahead of myself. Step 32. Use a pair of locking tweezers or a small pair of pliers to remove the uh, left and right speaker connectors straight out of the socket. So this is step 32 and step 33. We're going to start with the right speaker. And so you guys can see, get you in frame. This is the right speaker right here. We're gonna just get our pliers in here. Get a firm grip and pull straight out, just like so. So we got that done. So we get, we'll move on to step 33, which is here. I'll turn it sideways so you guys can see. Here's the other, this is the left speaker connector go ahead and remove that just like so uh, now that we've got that done we can move to step 34 which is flip up the small hinge locking flap on the joy-con sensor rail and that's this one here this gray one just go ahead and flip that up and again we're going to use our pair of, of sharp tweezers to go ahead and remove this from the socket just like so all right, getting down to the last three steps here. There's lots of steps. And again, if this is too much for you. All right, guys, we're on step 35. We've got three steps remaining. If this is way past your scope or you feel uncomfortable with attempting this repair, you can contact Game Realms today at 818-841-1545. Let them know your boy Frankie Fix sent you. And we'll get you taken care of if you live anywhere in the United States of America. You can ship your console to us once we're done with the repair we'll ship it back um, if for whatever reason we can't fix your console we will offer you some money for parts so all will, will not be lost uh, but in most cases we can repair your console so give us a call today at 818-841-1545 back to the repair all right guys i had to do a selfless plug there Okay, so now we're getting down towards the last three steps. So we've removed the cable. So we're on step 36, which is use a PH00 screwdriver to remove four 2.5 millimeter screws. These are black, okay? So these screws are located. One is here next to where the battery connects. You wanna keep these screws all together. And we'll turn the turn the device so you guys can see where all the screws are located one is here in this corner by the fan and the battery again these are ph00 screws they're 2.5 millimeter screws black you do not want to mix these screws up all right next we got a screw back here in the corner where the card reader used to sit and the uh, and the uh, audio jack connects for the headphones remove that one we have another one back here in this corner next to where our white antenna cable connects remove it all right and that's four there should be Let's see one two three four oh my bad uh, that's right four <laughs> so then we have two more 3.1 millimeter silver screws I believe and those are gonna be on the charging port itself on the C port so you're gonna remove these they're silver they're significantly bigger you'll know they're different keep those separate all right and the very last thing we need to do is to carefully remove the motherboard from the chassis okay and I'm gonna just pry underneath here with the spludger tool just like this kind of make sure that we're loose all the way around and we're going to carefully lift up and out and that's how we remove our motherboard all right now we need to go over to the microscope let me get the camera set up so we can attempt to replace 
uh, this device here. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and I put some flux paste on the board already. I'm going to heat it up a little bit and and uh, we'll get this old solder paste off. All right, I'm just gonna heat the side up a little bit. Not gonna get it too hot. Just gonna heat it up. All right, should be good. Let's see if this, yeah, this package is completely broken off and loose. You can see, we'll go ahead and then the board's kind of damaged here. We'll go ahead and clean it up with some soldering wick. And our soldering iron. Okay, so that pin broke with some force. The good thing is that this pad that this pad here is actually connected. It's the negative. This is a negative pad, so this will be fine. The one I'm worried about is this positive pad here. Um, so we're gonna have to take this off carefully. Let's see if we can get it off. Yes, we can. Okay. Get that off. Clean it up. All right, good. That's in good shape. Okay, a little bit of damage here, but I do not suspect that that's going to be an issue. We'll put some new solder on there. Should be okay. Give me just a second and we'll do that. I'll go ahead and put a little bit of solder here. That uh, should be good. That should be good. Okay. Here we have a two R two. Got it pretty straight. I'll put another bead on here. Looks good. Same here. This side's a little bit sticky because of where it broke, but we got enough surface area here on that pad to lock it down nice and tight. Go ahead and check it. It's on there pretty solid. I'll get this 
once it cools down, I mean, let me tell you guys, if you're soldering, you got to let this stuff cool down before you use alcohol to clean it or else what happens is the solder flux paste and the heat combined with the alcohol, even though it has a small percentage of water, will crystallize and kind of leave a brown crust on the board that's really yucky and hard to clean off. So that's one tip if you're going to solder this back into place. Make sure you're using good solder and good rosin flux paste. I use, so you guys know, SRA. This is number, come on, focus guy, come on. 135, uh, this stuff is fantastic, really good flow, easy to clean. And my soldering wick, although it's, you know, looks all mess, trash or whatever, I use super wick. There we go. Super wick fine braid, number 427. I don't know why it won't focus. Probably because it's focusing on the chip, but anyways, super wick. Best stuff. I love this stuff. It works really well. Okie dokie. Now we got it cooled off. I'm going to go ahead and use a cotton swab here. Here is my cotton swab. I will put the alcohol and we will clean it. That's how you dance, Jacob. All right, let's go ahead and clean up all this flux paste. Okay, I'm gonna use a very fine brush here to just brush out to the edges. I'm gonna brush out whatever flux is left. I don't like this puddle of solder here, but it's not gonna hurt anything. At least I know for sure it's not gonna move. Uh, see here right, looking pretty good Let's clean this up with our q-tip yeah in a future video we'll show how to replace this charging port I see this BQ 24 193 it's a very popular chip that has to be replaced uh, we do replace these chips quite frequently um, so I always wish that there were more PCB scans online uh, for these type of repairs to kind of show where some of these other resistors uh, and capacitors are. Okay, we got that buddy on there. Let's go ahead and test it out and see if we still have a short. First, I'm going to test the fuse here. All right, we got continuity. We did not have continuity before. It's reading at 0.527 on both sides, which is great. That's good. Okay, we're going to check both poles. We're at, uh, let me put this here so you guys can see. There we go, perfect. Okay, now we can, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using my positive lead. I'm grounding it here on this plate, on this metal plate right here. And uh, testing both sides. Both sides were reading good. We had a short over here on this capacitor see if it's short anymore oops no three four two three four five pretty consistent we're looking good all right all the caps seem good 
I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this guy. I have a feeling that we're going to be able to charge and power this thing up. All right. We're going to go ahead and start reassembly. First thing we're going to do is dock our motherboard. There is a, let me show you guys a trick. This is what I do. I normally take out the fan motor. It has three PH00 screws. Remove them. And remove your fan. This will make it 100% easier to reinstall your motherboard. Now you can slide the board underneath all these cables. Okay, just like so. We got one more down under here. Get that back down there. Okay. So, easiest way to do is to lift up on this end, set the motherboard in towards the charging port. And then we're going to just lift up on these cables and make sure nothing's in the way. Just like so. Okay. All of my Ribbon cables are visibly exposed and ready for reinstallation. Except for one, this guy back here. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go in the reverse order that we removed everything. So first thing we're gonna do is um, go ahead and replace the four 2.5 millimeter screws uh, that are black onto the motherboard and the two 3.1 millimeter screws that are silver on the C charging port. So let's go ahead and start with those. We'll use the two 3.1 millimeter silver screws to reinsert into the charging port. Go ahead and get that turned around so you guys can see it. Just like so. Now we have four black 2.5 millimeter screws that hold down the motherboard to the chassis. We'll start back here in the corner. Excuse me. We have one over here in this corner next to the battery and where the fan goes. I'm gonna reinsert my fan next. We have one down here by the battery uh, terminal where the battery reconnects. Go ahead and get that one in. We have one up here in the top. Now that we got those back in, let's go ahead and drop our fan motor back into place. And replace those screws as well. Three of them. Secure our fan. Okay, we got it. All right, it's over here, my bad. This is where we left off. Uh, so here's our Joy-Con ribbon cable. The trick to get this down here, I use my finger and these tweezers to kind of guide it. Once you get it straight, you can push down on this tab and insert it. It'll go in. 
all the way in and push down. There we go. All right, next I'm gonna use my pliers to grab my speaker wire. I'm gonna set it down where it goes and push in just like so. And we'll switch over to the other side. We'll do the same thing. We'll get our speaker wire where it goes and push in. Now it's into place. All right. So next we're gonna go ahead and get our white antenna wire back into place. Here it is. And get it right over the socket. And once you're over the socket, you can push straight down. It'll snap into place. And then we're gonna go over to our black antenna wire and do the same thing. Snap them right into place. Next, we're gonna go get go ahead and do our Joy-Con sensor uh, ribbon cable from the from the rail from the rail. We're gonna go ahead and plug this one back in. All right, looks like we got it. Get it in all the way and push it down. Same thing with our small LCD cable. Lock it into place. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and move to the power and volume button data, ribbon data cable. We gotta get this guy in here. like we're all the way in push down you'll know that cable isn't connected right if you have no no volume or power too that's that could be another issue okay we'll go ahead and get this fan motor the fan motor ribbon cable has a white line that you can follow once that's all the way in push the tab down push push your HLF down okay all good now we're going to go ahead and get our LCD ribbon cable back in. This one is easier to do with the tips of your fingers because it stays in pretty straight. And then you use the side tabs to push in so that the cable goes all the way in. And then push down on your tab on the HLF. Boom, locked into place. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and take our headphone jack that we removed and set it back into place, just like so. Now, first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and connect the headphone jack. You wanna make sure that this rectangle on the headphone jack is is right over the connector before you put pressure down because you could bend uh, those pins so it has to be done first and you'll feel it snap into place okay once that happens oops You can go ahead and take your headphone jack bracket and set it where it goes. Okay, got it in place. I'm gonna go ahead and get my three screws. These are the PH00 3.1 millimeter screws, they're silver. You're gonna get those into place. So you have one here. And you're gonna have uh, you have two of them um, over the headphone jack bracket, this black bracket, and get those into place. Do not over tighten these screws. Stop whenever you feel that the screw is has reached 
has reached the end point you want to stop okay now we're gonna go ahead and get our uh, ribbon cable um, this is the uh, I believe this is the digitizer cable right here so when you touch the screen that's what this cable does controls the digitizer make sure it's all the way in it is push down on the flap and there you go got your card reader back installed all right guys just a few more steps and we're there okay so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and replace the heat sink now before we do that we need to put the thermal paste on And so you know, I use MX4 Thermal Compound. Uh, it's made by Arctic. Uh, same company as Arctic Silver. It's pretty much a good universal paste for most consoles. I'm gonna put about a little less than a pea size amount and spread it across this copper plate. I'm using a spatula. Get a little bit more on there. All right. Then a thin coating will do fine here. Okay. Now I'll take my heat sink. And I'm going to apply thermal paste to the bottom of the heat sink. Small amount. Just enough to cover the plate. suffice we'll go ahead and get this back into place go ahead and clean off my spatula All right, and now you have three uh, PH00 mil three millimeter screws uh, that hold the heat sink down into place. Okay, now what we're gonna do is go ahead and connect the battery, which is right here. All right, and we can get our heat shield, put it back into place. And we have six 3.1 millimeter screws securing the heat shield.
So get your six screws back into the heat, heat shield. So now I'm going to get my card reader, my SD card reader. You have to make sure that this plug is properly inserted. You have to make sure you feel it snap into place or it will not read the SD card. Now there's one trick. You can go ahead and remove this piece of foam. Peel it off. You can get this down here and feel it snap. And you can take this foam and put it right back on top. Now you can insert your screw. It's a 3.1 millimeter screw as well. Boom. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and set our top back into place. And we have a really small 1.6 millimeter screw in the kickstand that we need to replace. It's a PH00 1.6 millimeter screw. Tighten it back into place. Once we get that into place, go ahead and reinsert your SD card. You can snap your kickstand down. Next, use your PH00 to uh, replace the center screws on the Joy-Con rail. These are uh, 3.8 millimeter center screws. They're quite a bit thicker than any of the screws that we've been working with in thickness. You're going to get those into place. All right, got them. So it's this middle screw here. All right, once we got those, we got no music, man. What's going on? It's a victory song here, victory. Let's see here. We have uh, two 2.5 millimeter uh, long screws on top, on the top edge of the switch. So right here, Get these in. Got it into place. And then if we turn it on the bottom, we have one more. nice and snug and last but not least we have the four Y double zero long screws they're 6.3 millimeters super long get them into get them into place is it guys moment of truth we'll see if that was the issue if it is the customer is extremely lucky as you all know once we get into replacing IC chips it's really expensive uh, to repair these switches especially the charging ports there's a lot of places that won't even do a charging port 
we do charging ports we replace IC chips and we can do board repair the only chip I'm not going to attempt to repair or reflow or change solder balls on is the actual processor the graphics processor everything else we, we can do um, so okay we got it back together let's go ahead and slide our joy cons back in and get my camera set up here all right, Jacob, so what do you think? Do you think it's gonna work? Yeah. Oh, that doesn't sound very convincing to me. <laughs> you have no confidence. <laughs> All right, let's go, plugged it in. Guess what, guys? It's charging. Let's see if it'll turn it on. Did it? Whoa! No. <laughs> it works. It works, of course it works. Console is charging. As it's you guys charging. can see, it's powered on right away. So that was the issue. So we got it taken care of. So what do you think? I don't know. I think he doesn't know. <laughs> Once again, thanks for coming and watching. Make if you have any questions, leave a comment in the con comment section. What else? Make sure to like and subscribe. And also put the bell on so you never miss these cool videos. That's right. We're out. <laughs> You're out. I'm in. Because <laughs> I'm on. <laughs>